Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Net zero equals gross outcome. Trans infants and pro Hamas. <laughs> You're here with the big SIG TIG. Let's get into it. What do we got? Popping. Boom. Net zero CO2 emissions, a damaging and totally unnecessary goal. The goal of reaching net zero global anthropogenic emissions of carbon dioxide sounds overwhelmingly difficult. While humanity continues producing CO2 at increasing rates with a temporary pause during COVID, how can we ever reach the point where these emissions start to fall, let alone reach zero by 2050 or 2060? What isn't being discussed, as far as I can tell, is the fact that atmospheric CO2 levels, which we will assume for the sake of discussion causes global warming, will start to fall even while humanity is producing lots of CO2. Let me repeat that in case you missed the point. Atmospheric CO2 levels will start to fall even with modest reductions in anthropogenic CO2 emissions. Why is that? The reason is due to something called CO2 sink rate. It has been observed that the more CO2 there is in the atmosphere, the more quickly nature removes the excess. The NASA studies showing global greening in satellite imagery since the 1980s is evidence of that. Last year I published a paper showing that the record of atmospheric CO2 at Mauna Loa, Hawaii suggests that each year nature removes an average of 2% of the atmospheric excess above 295 parts per million. The purpose of this paper was to not only show how well a simple CO2 budget model fits the Mauna Loa CO2 measurements, but also to demonstrate that the common assumption that nature is becoming less able to remove excess CO2 from the atmosphere appears to be an artificial, sorry, artifact of El Nino and La Nina activity since monitoring began in 1959. As a result, that 2% sink rate has remained remarkably constant over the last 60 plus years. By the way, the previously popular CO2 airborne fraction has huge problems as a meaningful statistic, and I wish it had never been invented. If you doubt this, just assume CO2 emissions are cut in half and see what the computed airborne fraction does. It's meaningless. Here's my latest model to fit the Mauna Loa record through 2023, where I've added a stratospheric aerosol term to account for the fact that major volcanic eruptions actually reduced atmospheric CO2 due to increased photosynthesis from diffused sunlight penetrating deeper into vegetation canopies. Huh. So you're telling me, sir, that the Earth is uh, self-regulatory and uh, human intervention can uh, basically just be regulated naturally? And humans don't have to get involved? Well, most people would call you uh, a psycho, a climate uh, denier. <laughs> what would a modest 1% per year reduction in global CO2 emissions do. The UN claims that CO2 emissions will need to decline rapidly to achieve net zero by mid-century. Specifically, they say 45% reductions below 2020, sorry, 2010 levels will need to be made by 2030, and net zero will need to be achieved by 2050 in order to limit future global warming to the rather arbitrary goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so they've been talking about this since like 1969 when they came out with a, a climate alarmism article in the New York Times and ever since then, every single time a climate uh, threshold was reached, nothing ever happened. Nothing. And they keep changing the name of it. And, like, it's true. There's certainly uh, changes happening in the climate. But to attribute it to this, it's a stretch. Uh, so looking down through the models here, a bit of science. If you want to check out the article, it is definitely worth a read. I don't understand why this issue is not being discussed. All of the net zero rhetoric I can see seems to imply that warming will continue if we don't cut our CO2 emissions to essentially zero. But that's not true because that's not how nature works. Boom. And uh, let's just see who wrote this thing. It seems like they have a really good idea of what they're talking about. Uh, by Roy W. Spencer, PhD. Go ahead, check it out. All right, Jersey artist avoids jail after making more than 500 indecent images of children as young as three. Say what? 
He avoids jail. How so? A Jersey artist best known for his characters and children's book illustrations has avoided jail after making indecent images of minors. Edward John Blampied possesses more than 560 indecent images, mostly of girls aged between 3 and 16 years old. Horrific. He was ordered to carry out 312 hours of community service and fined 2,000 pounds after being in custody for a short time prior to his sentencing. The 47-year-old claimed he was looking at explicit images to relieve his OCD and anxiety. Totally legit. I mean, like, I get anxious all the time and I need to look at kitty porn. Great excuse, Blampied. Uh, alongside a fine in community service, Blampied was given a two-year probation order and told to take part in an 18-month rehabilitation program. He was also referred for taking therapies and psychological assessment. In total, Blampy downloaded 568 indecent images, 44 of which were Category A, the most serious type. Babies, probably. The material had been viewed on his laptop in 2022 and 2023. So there you go. Sick individual uh, gets a slap on the wrist for being the creepiest dude on earth, and there he is, Blampied. Uh, yeah, and if you don't know, anyone who's living in California or near California, um, soliciting sex from a minor is a misdemeanor. Unbelievable. Germany passes gender self-identification law allowing infants to transition imposes massive fine for dead naming what well let's dive right into this sticky pit the german parliament of bundestag passed one of the world's most far-reaching sex self-determination policies on april 12th despite protests from women's rights campaigners the Self-Determination Act, SBGG, establishes gender identity as a protected characteristic and allows parents to change the sex marker on their children's documents from birth. Supported by Chancellor Olaf Scholz, three-party coalition, and promoted and supported by the Socialist Democratic Party, the SBGG also created the potential for citizens to be fined up to 10,000 euros, approximately 10,800 USD for revealing a person's given name and birth sex without their permission, an action that trans activists staunchly oppose and refer to as dead naming. Yeah, so uh, if I was uh, Benjamin and now I'm uh, Bethany and someone came up to me and was like, hey, uh, Benjamin, and I'm like, no, sir, that's my dead name. How dare you? And I said, I'm sorry, I didn't know, but you might get away with it, but if I do it again, Look out, you are getting uh, a fine of 10,000 pounds or 10,000 euros. Crazy. Um, yeah, so there's a video there uh, that's... Perhaps we'll have a look. But arguably the most troubling aspect of the law relates to a portion of the bill which permits parents to alter the recorded sex of children beginning from birth. From the age of five years old, it allows for name and sex changes if there is mutual consent between the child and their parents. Five years old. My kid is six, okay? And... Uh, you know, she doesn't believe in anything stupid. We didn't teach her any of the stupid stuff that uh, everyone teaches their kids, like rabbits delivering eggs and uh, Santa Claus delivering presents. She knows of him, and her grandfather dresses up like him, but she doesn't believe in it because she knows that it's totally fake, totally stupid. Same as someone coming in, snatching teeth from under your pillow and leaving you money. doesn't make sense. She questioned it, and we said, yeah, you're totally right. It's not true. I would much rather teach her reality and have to explain why I lied to her for so long. And mutual consent, my gosh. Hey, guess what? My kid wanted to be uh, Slimer, and then uh, she wanted to be the Marshmallow Man, and she loves cats, always pretends to be a cat. So should I affirm all that? We can consent to be like, oh yeah, like I think she totally likes being a cat. Like, let's go for it, get the litter box. So this is absolutely... Uh, uh, Horrific to see. According to a description of the bill on the Bundestag official website, the Self-Determination Act was designed to implement a core idea of the basic law, the protection of gender identity, by giving people the opportunity to change their gender entry and first name without discrimination. It continues that following a change, a one-year blocking period will apply where no further changes are allowed, though a person may change their name and sex once again after the year passes. So every year you can change whoever you want to be, it doesn't matter. Uh, if parents choose to do so, they may alter the identifying information of their children from birth, the SBGG stipulates that the consent of the child is necessary from the age of 5, and from the age of 14, minors can do it themselves, but require consent of their guardians. However, should parents refuse to provide legal permission, a family court would decide based on the best interests of the child, thus allowing the state to overrule the wishes of the parents and legal guardian, because they're our children, not yours. Parents are always in the way of teaching. 
Crucially, the law includes a ban on disclosure that prohibits naming the sex and form of birth of the named individual. Yeah, we talk about the dead naming. Okay, let's go ahead and see what this video is all about. All right. All right, whatever. Forget it. Doesn't matter. We don't need to see that. There's some dude in German speaking about uh, how important it is to be affirmed and how his life has been so great and in involved, blah, 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 blah. Good for you. Keep it in the bedroom, buddy. Uh, sex reassignment surgery market worth 6.26 billion by 2030. Exclusive report by the Insight Partners. Yeah, so sports is worth like uh, 125 billion. It might just be like a sports franchise like NFL or something, but I think the whole sports potentially is one point. I think Pornhub or pornography industry is like 90 billion. Um, so this is like a little slice, a, a fraction, but 6.26 billion. That's why people are interested in this because it's a money racket. Growing social acceptance of the trans community and Medicare reimbursement scenarios introduced by state and federal laws are factors driving the regional market growth. Gender affirming surgery, also known as gender confirmation or gender reassignment surgery, is a procedure or series of procedures that can help shape the body of a transgender or non binary person to more closely align with the gender with which they identify. It has been reported that more than 48,000 people have had at least one gender affirming surgery during uh, 2016 to 2019. This primarily included breast or chest procedures, often called top surgery, which made up more than 56% of surgeries. People who had general reconstructive procedures called bottom surgeries made up 35% of the procedures. Facial and other cosmetic procedures are also included in the same. The number of gender affirming surgeries rose from 4552 in 2016 to 13,011 in 2019. Owing to the pandemic, the number slightly dropped in 2020 to 12,000. Still during the pandemic, you're able to get your slop and chop. Uh, this number has been rising since the second quarter of 2022. The number of medical appointments related to sex reassignment surgery rose from 13,855 in 2016 to 38,740 in 2020. Such factors has aided the overall market growth in the recent past and is expected to continue similar trend during the forecast period. According to a new research study on sex reassignment surgery market, Forecast to 2030 global analysis by surgery type, end user, and geography, the market is estimated to grow from U.S. 2.9 billion in 2022 to U.S. 6.26 billion in the subsequent years leading to 2030. It is estimated a record CAGR of 10.1 during 2022 to 2030. Yeah, so it's big business. That's why it's being pushed, and that's why doctors aren't questioning anything, because uh, a report came out, I think, uh, from one of the lettered agents, CDC or WHO, something like that, stating that uh, there's about a billion dollars, or sorry, no, 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 my, my apologies, one million dollars over a lifetime. That's how much someone's going to pay to become another gender, over a lifetime. Up to. The average, I think, is like two hundred and fifty to 500000 It's big bucks for a patient. DEI backlash pushes shell-shocked colleges to the right. Hmm, interesting. Big-name colleges are now cracking down more aggressively on pro-Palestine protests, which they say are getting increasingly intense and disruptive. Why it matters? Politicians exerting massive pressure on universities over protest, diversity efforts, and curricula have started to push administrators to the right. Congressional testimony by Columbia University's leadership and the school's subsequent aggressive posture towards student protesters this week spotlighted the increasing influence of conservatives on American campuses. It's a stark pivot from just a few weeks ago when colleges bolstered their diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and course offerings in the wake of Black Lives Matter protests. Oh, no, no, no. It's a little bit too inclusive now. Uh, we can't include the, the terrorists. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you open up the floodgates. Water rushes in. And it's dirty water. Republican representatives have led congressional inquiries into the state of anti-Semitism anti on elite college campuses. A hearing late last year led to the resignations of the presidents of Harvard, University of Pennsylvania, following backlash from in influential donors. And also, there was some plagiarism happening there. But in a similar hearing on Wednesday, Columbia's leadership appeared less sympathetic to protesters and more aligned with lawmakers. All right, let's see what happened. Yeah, anyway, you guys can see that it's clearly a uh, cultish. One step forward. One step forward. Another step forward. 
another step forward. Yeah. So, uh, whatever, dude, listen. Pro Palestine, pro Hamas. They shouldn't have October 7th to Israel. And this is what you get in return when you enter a country unlawfully, outside of the rules of engagement, attack civilians, and then take hostages. You get fafoed. All right, let's check out and see what's going on in New York. Seems like they're a little bit more conservative now. Not really. So yeah, this is a, an encampment that is formed on a, the New York campus, NYU, in Manhattan. You have all the Palestinian uh, pro-Hamas people. New York University, currently hundreds, possibly thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters have gathered outside New York University, located in midtown Manhattan, leading to clashes with New York police. Mass arrests are underway, including the apprehension of dozens of NYU faculty members from the Liberated Zone encampment. Liberated Zone. Dozens of tents have been dismantled or removed as a massive number of police officers continue to clear out the protesters by video. Yeah. There you have it, people. That is your youth, and they're being indoctrinated with uh, pro-terrorism and uh, anti-Zionist anti-Semitism. Wonderful. Uh, inside Arizona town, where a ruthless gang of teens ran amok, Gilbert Goons had parents terrified to send their kids to school before the beating death of Preston Lord. Oh, good, good Lord. Um, unfortunate for Preston there. God rest his soul. Pray for him. It's billed as one of the safest places to raise children in America, but on the outskirts of Phoenix, Arizona, uh, parents say sending their kids to class is like waving soldiers off to war. The Chandler Unified School District in Arizona has been sued by dozens of parents who claim their children have been harassed, seriously injured, driven out of the country, and even to suicide by violent bullies allowed to run wild. Some attackers are allegedly members of a gang of teens who call themselves the Gilbert Goons and have terrorized Phoenix suburbs since as far as back as 2022. The teen's reign of violence, which allegedly included armed robberies, dozens of assaults at parties, and in parking lots, several with brass knuckles, culminated the fading beating, fatal beating of Preston Lord 16 at a Halloween party. October 28th, we covered this story, and uh, they beat him and uh, desecrated his body as he laid there dying, unfortunately. Uh, absolutely disgusting. Several of the teenage murder suspects have previously been accused of assaults connected to the goons. Uh, with some of the community saying that authorities in action on the teenage violence uh, group could have led to Lord's death. Rick Cuny told DailyMail.com he had been fighting school and police regarding goons' violence officials for months after his son was brutally beaten at an in-and-out parking lot following weeks of alleged harassment by the goons. In a lawsuit against the officials' goon suspects and their parents, Cure claims he received no help from officials and was forced to send his son overseas after he continued receiving threats from the teen delinquents. He's already been transferred. He already transferred his son from Campo Verde High School to nearby Perry High School due to alleged bullying. But within one week of starting the new school, his son received the first threat. The father said, "I thought it'd be a new beginning, but school started on July 19th of 2023, and literally a week after that, he received his first threat from a kid from the old school, saying something to the fact that he had a big mouth and my boys are going to jump you." All right, yeah. So what are you going to do? messages uh, back and forth of the goons uh, messaging people here's a picture of the father February 2022 two juveniles throw a fire extinguisher off a parking lot's roof and strike a man December 2nd there's attack with brass knuckles and then there's a second attack Kyler Renner Jacob Pennington Jack Woods Garrett Bagshaw Christopher Fantastic Noah Pennington Jacob, can't read it, Tyler Freeman, Owen Hines, Cody Corston, and Greg. These are all the people that uh, stomped out uh, Preston. All right. Can you recall the first thing I did? I went to Vice Principal Kevin Ames because he oversees the 11th graders. I reported it immediately because I've already been through this. And I'm not going to go through it again. And I specifically told him, hey, it's not a matter of if this happens, a matter of when. And I want to make sure I'm letting everybody know that this needs to know, that needs to know about this. My request was, look, I know the school can't give me their parents' phone numbers, but I can give them mine. So I said to the vice principal, here's my phone number. Please call me. Let's get together in a room with you and those parents and sit down and figure out why do your kids hate my kid? He doesn't know. He's not even been at school for two weeks. 
Father recalled his son's terror as he begged his dad to be careful as he walked back to the home because he had believed the teens were armed. He never heard back from Ames regarding the quest. Soon after the meeting, Cunard was out walking his dog when he received desperate texts from his son informing him that his bullies had pulled up to their home in cars and wanted to fight. Yeah. Okay, so where are the police? What is going on here? He runs through this. He got no shoes on because he stole his shoe. They stole his shoes. His jeans are ripped. Blood is everywhere on his shirt. He got footprints on his back and stuff. When I saw the amount of blood coming from him, to this day I haven't even looked at the video. I can't look. Yeah. So there's a bunch of thugs, okay? And uh, they're not black. They're not white. There's a mix of thugs. They look Hispanic, white, and a couple of black kids there, perhaps. And uh, yeah, so it's just a bunch of kids running amok. So where's the police? How come they can't stop this? Seems like everybody in the town is terrified of these jerks. Look at them. Here he is with a gun, a pistol. All right, all right. Uh, so yeah, there you have it. There's a gang running amok of kids, and no one cares. And here's your uh, obvious news of the day. Unhappy or anxious, how your sleep may be the cause. Could you imagine that not getting enough sleep can make you cranky or grouchy? So we're not even going to read this, but we found that all forms of sleep loss, total sleep deprivation, partial sleep loss, and sleep fragmentation resulted in emotional changes. <laughs> oh, would you have guessed? Uh, how about correcting your diet there as well? Get to bed at an early hour, 10 o'clock. Try to wake up around 7 or 8 as the sun comes up, and your circadian rhythm will sort itself out, along with all of the systems inside, especially if you have fresh air and exercise. 10,000 likes or subs, the mask comes off. Looks like it's going to happen by summer, so mark your calendar. Sigma Tiger, signing out.